If you got the chance to find out how a 208 marathon are trained, you'd jump at it, right? But better than find out, what if you met them and you chatted it all through and you got to know them and then you trained like them for a week? Obviously, when I say I trained like them, I don't mean that I ran the same speeds or I did the same volumes. It was more my adapted version of this week and I'm going to show you how I did it so that you can adapt it to suit you as well using the five lessons that I learned during the week. And I can tell you, it didn't exactly go to plan. So meet Rory Linkletter, a 27-year-old Canadian elite runner with a PB of 2.08.01 that he ran at Seville earlier this year. And you know what's significant about that time? The time needed to qualify for the 2024 Olympics is 2.08.10. So Rory's got the time and quite possibly a place on the Canadian Olympic team, fingers crossed. And you can follow his journey on his own brilliant YouTube channel. So how does someone, hopefully on their way to the Olympic marathon, train for a marathon? Rory, I've got a feeling um, this is going to be a painful week for, for someone that's run. A t First of all, congratulations. 208 marathon is absolutely mind blowing. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, we're, uh, as we speak, eight, nine days removed from Seville. And I'd still say I'm, I'm like in the processing phase of like, yeah, that, that really happened. So I'm, I'm excited and, you know, 208's never, it'll never be good enough, but it's like, <laughs> it's like one of those things where I'm really happy with what I did and, uh, and I'm really excited for what it means the next step is because the way I view it is the, the mountaintop is still far away, but all I did was make it to a pretty cool viewpoint. I can't even fathom that viewpoint. I'm still at base camp. If you could talk me through what your typical week in kind of let's say five six seven weeks out from your your 208 marathon what did that week look like so i started my week um with uh monday being like a medium distance run and an easy double to get ready for the first session of the week so we're going to work backwards and work towards the uh, marathon simulation at the end of the week so everything this week is just touching some stimuluses that the body needs still in marathon training but with the emphasis being, hey, Sunday's the big one. That's the big workout. That's the one that 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 you make your 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 bread and 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 and, and earn your uh, your marathon legs in. So Monday, a classic mileage day. I did 85 minutes in the morning, 35 minutes in the afternoon. And straight away, this is lesson one. What a professional runner deems recovery is something that's not usually accessible to the normal runner like you or I. So whereas Rory's recovery is two hours of easy running, my recovery has to be a day off with my working day in between and I just I know my legs, so don't feel like when you see professional runners and elite runners running every single day of the week that you have to mirror that. You don't. How they recover is different to how we recover, and that's okay. So Monday was a day off. Tuesday was a speed-focused session. This is something that I believe is super important to still touch in marathon training. I find that a lot of people neglect the wheels. I can't run those paces, the, the 208 pace, if that pace doesn't feel slow for me. So I have to keep my legs fast so that the marathon pace doesn't feel fast anymore. The goal is yeah. for it to feel like a walk in the park for a really long time. Well, it's time to give this a go. It's um, like 10 past 5 a.m. I'm on a school trip, so I have to get this first session in before the kids even wake up. But luckily, just over there, there's a really nice track. So while I'm not doing exactly Rory's session, I'm doing my own interval session. It's the interval session that I'm taking from this. I'm gonna do intervals this morning and a more thresholdy run this afternoon. And I'm gonna start with 800 meter repeats because also watching Floberg runs, if you can run an 800 meters at around the time scaling up to your marathon, then you should be in reasonably good nick. So I'm gonna try and run 10 800 meter repeats at 248 per repeat is the aim. Okay. And let's go. Way off. Oh. Two forty six for the last rep. All I kept thinking about in that session was what Rory was talking about, that 
he wants his marathon pace on race day to feel slow which is why he just includes speed in his week and I get that totally I bought in so today double run day both of faster than marathon pace and we'll see how it goes but the legs held up actually surprisingly all right so on to session two so uh, on Tuesday afternoon, I came back for what I call an up-tempo double. And this is kind of like a, a Ryan Hall spin-off of what I would call a double threshold. Obviously, I didn't do threshold in the morning, but like hitting like a system that's similar to very controlled threshold work in the afternoon mm -hmm. after a session like this is very common under, under Ryan. And uh, it's very unstructured. It's basically run comfortably hard for a set amount of time. For this one, it was 35 minutes. Um, and it's not like your true threshold. It should probably be 30 seconds slower than marathon pace uh, is what I usually average. And uh, that's just getting out the door, building towards that pace. Usually it's pretty progressive, uh, but you should be within yourself and feeling really smooth in that, in that run. One thing I've learned is to not add incremental little bits onto each run if you've got a set distance. For my legs, I kind of know where they're at and how to get there and distances. And I, although I only need to get there, I called it at 5K, 1943 for the 5K, including the 1K kind of warm up run, which is around tempo pace pretty much. So I'll take that and I'll move on to the next run. I'm just gonna keep knocking them off as best I can. Well, that was a pretty punchy day, right? And that is lesson two, I guess, that speaking to Rory, what I realise is that he, even as an elite marathon runner, likes to run fast so that it makes his marathon pace run slow. And I do buy into that. You can't just lose the wheels that you have and just do everything at marathon pace or slower. So this was a punchy day, but actually, one that I felt was very beneficial because these paces that I'm running are at the end of the day, hopefully, fingers crossed, going to make mine, going to make Rory's marathon pace feel slow. Um, Wednesday, I came up uh, another easy day. This time did 70 minutes in the morning, 40 minutes in the afternoon. So a little less because I'm bridging two workouts. Okay, on with the run. The aim is 5K this morning, 10K this evening of nice easy base miles. On to the next. Then I come back Thursday, and this is just a light threshold touch setting up for the long weekend uh, workout. I did six miles at, at marathon pace up here in Flagstaff, so it was a little bit of an aggressive tempo, but shorter. Um, and then I came back with another 30 minute up tempo double that, that afternoon. So it's two workout days in four days, and those second sessions in those days are, are I would call, uh, like a very, very moderate hit and a small hit to the system. But I, I think that that kind of adds that callousing to the legs throughout the week. I'm running a 20 minute 5K, which is technically my marathon pace. So it should feel reasonably comfortable, which it does. But uh, the legs do feel tight. So I'm gonna do something that Rory doesn't do. And tomorrow, my, my version of recovery is day off massage whereas Rory's is going to be another run but this has been a nice little session actually so something I'm getting a sense of over this week from Rory and something that I really buy into anyway and I try and get the athletes that I coach to train like is that it's feel over pace anything could have happened in your week stress tiredness in my case the extreme heat of this country and if you try and run purely on a pace it might not necessarily work and it might be a little bit disheartening that you can't hit those paces so for me 
I kind of know what marathon pace feels like. I kind of know what my tempo pace feels like. So I try and dial into those rather than looking at the pace that I'm running. And it's something that, as you've seen, Rory really buys into as well. Because also, let's think about it, come race day, anything could happen, technology could fail, you need to know the feel. And uh, Friday I hit a 90 minute uh, morning run, so a medium long run, whatever you want to call it and then took the afternoon off. This is something I like to do once a week. Don't double, just do a, a longer morning run and then take that afternoon off. And I find that even though I ran a little further in the morning, it helps me kind of use that afternoon to reset, recharge. Well, not gonna lie, Friday is a recovery day for me. I, my legs are too sore. That's the massage parlor we've just been in. So good. Parlor? Massage, that sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? It's a massage place. But it was amazing. So this is what we're gonna do on our recovery while Rory runs, I chill. That's how it go. Saturday, I kind of did a shorter, easy run setting, uh, easy run day just to set up the Sunday marathon simulation. So I did 70-30. So only an hour and 40 minutes of easy running rather than the two hours that I would normally try to do on an easy day. So just cutting that volume by 20 minutes. This is the way I'm looking at it. When you're an elite runner, when you're at the level of Rory, your recovery days are often kind of one or two easy runs. So you're still running on your recovery days. And, and for us mere mortals, that's not always possible. So I'm using my recovery days in a way that I think I will best recover. <laughs> so here's how I'm applying the spirit of Rory's week is that I'm prioritizing his workout day. So Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday were, were serious session days and the rest is seen as kind of easy or recovery. So whilst I did do easy Wednesday, uh, I'm thinking Friday, day off, and, and actually Saturday, while my legs are still in pain, the Achilles is right on the edge, I'm coming to the school gym to do my recovery. So it's still gonna be exercise on an elliptical. And that is 10K no pain 50 minutes and so that is totally worth it in my books like to, to be able to do 10 kilometers with no leg pain it sets me up with a, the possibility i guess of doing a session like a decent run tomorrow based on effort but at least i can in my head think yeah i might be able to run so this recovery this way of doing it totally worth it the marathon simulation we use the, the imperial system here <laughs> So we'll, we do two miles warm up. Uh, that's just easy running, just getting the body going. And then we do 10 miles at a moderate pace, which for me on this day, I believe was 537 per mile, which was is like 45 seconds lower than marathon pace. But it's generally written so that you run 45 to a minute slower than your marathon pace. Uh, it's just like fast enough that you're you know, you're burning fuel, you're, you're, you're getting the legs tired, you're not just out there jogging, but you're getting that time on feet and a little bit of an aerobic hit. And then I did 10 miles at marathon effort. So I've already run 12 miles and I hit 10 miles at marathon effort. This is like, this is what uh, Ryan views as like a true indicator of where you're at in marathon fitness because you're, you're tired legged, you're at the end of a marathon week you're 12 miles in before you even start running marathon effort and then you sustain that for for almost an hour 50 minutes for for me here um and yeah uh 10 miles of marathon effort and then a two mile cool down for a 24 mile day or 38 39k i think yeah. is what it ends up shaking out to and lesson four, if you have a goal in mind, a time in mind or whatever, then running at marathon pace is crucial in your training. People sometimes say run above it and below it, but to me that doesn't really make sense because you need to know what it's gonna feel like. And especially the way Rory's doing it is getting the marathon specific efforts in on tired legs, which again is double whammy, because again, that's how it feels in a marathon. So during the long run marathon specific work, it feels like it's really important. If the elites are doing it, we should be too. Okay, so the plan is this. I'm gonna run another five kilometers easy and then a little bit like Rory. I'm just gonna up my pace to 
marathon pace feel. So I'm not going pace because I don't know if you can, I mean, this is ringing wet, but I'm gonna go on feel and see if I can do the second half of that run on marathon pace. But my legs are really hurting, as you saw from yesterday with the elliptical. So, you know, I bought the bike just in case I have to cycle at the end. All right, I'm off. Hang on. Marathon feel. See you dudes. Okay, shouldn't be too much more just of what it feels like when you run a marathon. All right, the second five was done in about an average of 4.15 a kilometer, which is not too bad considering the heat. And I'll take that, but I, the legs have taken a pounding. So I've got to decide what I do now for that last lap. So because of the legs, how it actually panned out was that I did 15 kilometers easy, and then I did 11 kilometers at marathon feel. And I called it a day at 26 instead of 30 kilometers, which I'm really happy with, and a cool down, obviously, after a hard week of work and training. Quite hard to talk. I suppose one really interesting thing for me in lesson five is that you see lots of people training for marathons where their build and volume just go up and up and up and up and up until they taper and come down. But what Rory's shown to me is that there are periods of his training where there are kind of almost super volume weeks. Maybe as he said, three times in a 12 week period where there's higher volume and then the next week we come back down. Now he probably is still overall building, but it, to me it was just nice to see that there are kind of builds and then periods of recovery to let the body adapt and then build again rather than just all the way up and if it's okay for an elite marathon runner it's definitely okay for us basically I'm gonna give it my best shot and I I can't thank you enough for letting me a little bit like in on your process and your kind of training for a 208 marathon I'm gonna be nothing like a 208 marathon but I'm gonna train like a 208 marathon so thank you yeah yeah I'm excited to see how you like it and I'm jealous that you get to kind of experiment with all these training methods on yourself. I, I actually wish I could like, just like, like break myself into like a, a hundred pieces and try a hundred different things and yeah. just see what, see what the outcome is. Because I, I, my curiosity is like, I want to try things. Yeah, thanks mate. I mean, I'm excited about it. Like, you know, what is life without risk, eh? And before we go, we gotta wish Rory the absolute best of luck for, first of all, qualifying for the Paris Olympics and then performing in it. And I'm sure he will, and I'm sure he's gonna smash it. As I always keep learning when I meet elite runners, they're just almost always elite people as well. Rory's no different, so we can't thank him enough. And don't forget to go and subscribe to Rory's channel. I'll link it down here. And if you enjoyed the video, then you'll definitely like these two. One where I trained like pro ultra runner Vlad Excel, and one where Mary trained like elite marathoner and friend of the channel and friend Philly Bowden. So there's a couple of options for you. And if you want to subscribe to our channel, no hard sell, but you know, the, the, the button's right there. So just nudge it. See you next week.